Today, non-repeat elements. So we're taking a string and we're going to return characters that never repeat. Uh, if there's multiple uniques, it's going to return only the first unique. And then after this is done, I'm going to show you how you can return every single element that is not repeating. This has huge implications in uh, security. So for those of you who are like, well, am I ever going to need this? What is it? Not only is this great practice for Python and for algorithm learning for um, interviews, but this is also very applicable to um, data security. So let's jump in and not to mention this is also a linear time solution. So what? So if we're going to do a non-repeating. That's what we're going to name our function today. And all we're passing through that is a string. Now, from the last video, if you remember, the first thing I'm going to do with any string that I'm messing with is we're going to replace what? Spaces with no spaces. And on top of that, I want to make this all lowercase. Um, just otherwise, if I didn't have it lowercase, a capital A and a lowercase a are different elements. So if I, it, you would you sit there and say, oh my God, it, 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 it didn't get, it gave me back an A, a big A and a little A. And you say, those are not unique. Those are the same, but they're not the same. They are unique. They have very different binary codes. Uh, so they are unique. So we're just going to make everything lowercase for simplicity's sake. Now, how are we going to even do this one? Well, we're going to create a dictionary. And again, the dictionaries are, or hash tables, depending on your language, they're all going to track the key value pair for each character in the string. So we're just creating a count. You know, it's not very different from a lot of the stuff that we've done, just done in a little bit different way. So we're going to create a character count. And again, that was just going to be at this point an empty dictionary. All right. Now, for character in S or for C and S, we'll keep it nice and, and simple. What do we want to do? If the, remember, you guys have seen this all the time. If the character is in the character count, uh, then we can add one to it. If it's not, then we want to add one. So what does that mean? Okay, well, we did four character in S. If character is in character count, if it's in character count, then I want to take character count and I want to add one to it for that particular element. Oh, so I need to do, I almost see, I almost made a boo-boo. Um, this is for that C, only for that letter C. I want to add uh, for that that particular iter iterative element that we're using at that moment, which in this case is C, four character in C, if C is in character count, if it is, then we want to, for that particular C, we want to add plus one for that value. Uh, and then, of course, we always have the, well, what if it ain't? So then we're going to have to do our else. So if character is not in character count, then what do I want to do? Well, I just want to simply take character count and for, again, for that particular C, don't forget that part, and we want to add it there. We want to give it its first value of one. Now we're going to iterate again. And then we're going to re we're going to do a second iteration uh, to return the characters with only one count, meaning uh, the unique character. So how are we going to do that? Well, still within this function, but we're going to back out because it's, it's a whole separate for loop, if you will, for C in S. So same thing there. If character count for that particular C, because again, we're iterating. So we're going one by one equals one. If it equals one, that means it's unique, right? So we want to return C. Come on. Otherwise, if I'm going to back out of this, I'm going to return none. Come on, man. Stop that. I want to return none. Otherwise, if um, if, if none of them are going to equal one, which means that there, if there are no repeating elements within that particular string, then damn it, I want it to tell me so. So. Let's do this. We named this non-repeating. There we go. It's a string. So I'm going to put quotes inside that function string. And we're going to do I apple ape peels. Now I did this on purpose. So let's run it. Run non-repeat. Again, let's make this a floater. There we go. We got a floater. And it returned I. So is I, the only one that's not repeated, I is not repeated, A is repeated, P is obviously repeated, L is repeated, E is repeated, there's no other unique. So that is appropriate. Now, um, just for argument's sake, what if I did, I want to prove a point. If I do this and if I take this out, 
Later, it will give me all of them. See, now, first of all, it's going to be a capital I. It's only returning the first one, though, but it would have also... And the reason for that is, um, as it goes through this loop and it creates the counts for the dictionary, when it goes through this and it gets to the letter I, because that's the first one that, that's, that it's coming across, if the character count equals one, that one does. So it's going to return C, and it's going to completely take me out of the loop at that point. It's going to stop going on. Uh, but you're going to see later how we would have to... Um, We would get multiple returns for unique elements. Uh, and I'm going to take the lower out just to show you what it's doing. So let us, um, we'll debug it real quick. Even though I, th I think the next one, the debugging is going to be a little bit more appropriate. So let's, let's debug it. I don't need this. So let's F8 our way through. We're going to put our string into memory. I apple A peels. S dot replace. Nothing new there. It's going to lowercase and it's going to remove all the spaces. Character counts an empty dictionary. So now for C in S. So its first one's going to be I. For C in character count, character count is going to equal C. So now right now the C is I. So I is not in the character count. So it's going to go down to my else. Else make it one. So now we're going to have an I and a comma one or colon one. I'm sorry because it's a dictionary. It's not a tuple. So now for C and S, now we're going to go to A. And it's going to do the same thing. You're not in there, so we're going to go to the else. We're going to go to an A. We're going to go to P. It's the first time it's seeing P. Now we're going to P again. So again, we're at the second P in the word apple. For character in character count, it is. Right now, P is right here, and it has a count of 1. So all I want to do is go to the next line of code, because that was true. Character count of the index C at that moment, which is P, equals... Whatever P is right now, 1 plus 1. So it's going to change that to 2. So now this is how we're getting non-unique elements. And as we go through this whole loop, wait till we get to the L. We have our L. So next is going to be S. S is not in there, so it's going to add a character kind of S1. Excellent. Now we're going to jump into this for loop. You're going to see that it's going to try to find a 4C and S, but all the C's are done. So we jump into that for loop. Now we're down below 4C in S. If character count equals one, so we're going to FA through. If character count equals one, well, the first C in S is I. I equals one. That's yeah, going to give me a true. It's going to go to the next letter code, return C. It's going to return that I. And as far as the code is concerned, it's done. But we know that that is not true. So there we go. We have our I. Because we know that there could have been other letters that repeated. Um, and if it wasn't the first letter that was the unique element, then if when it got through this line here, line 21, it would have went, it would have went for to 22. When we executed 22, it would have skipped this and it would have returned not at that moment. I'm sorry. No, I'm lying. It would have went back to the for loop and it would have done the second C, which at that point would have been the A. And it would have uh, been looking for the for the first time that character count equaled one, character count being that dictionary we created for the key value pairs. So what would we do to this? Get rid of that for a moment. What would we do to this if we wanted to make this um, account for all of the uh, non repeats? Well, to do that, we're going to sit within the code that we've already started. I'm just going to bring some of this together so we have a little bit more space on the screen. So what would we need to change if we wanted to return not only the first element, but any and all, a total of the unique elements? Well, let's go line by line. So we can obviously keep this. We can clearly keep this. There's no change in there. Character counts still going to be empty dictionary. We're still going to be able to keep our first for loop. Let's actually do this. So a little bit of separation visually. We can still keep our first for loop. There's no reason we have to make any change in that. We're still creating a dictionary uh, with the characters and the count for that. Um, but now it's going to get a little bit different. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to get rid of this second for loop. And what are we going to do instead? Well, we're going to create a list. So to do that, we want our final answer. And it's going to be at this point an empty list. All right. Actually, let's rename this. Let's call it... Uh, all, all uniques. So we're going to make a list of all the unique elements that exist within the string that we're putting through. So um, we have an empty list. We want to sort our dictionary now so that the values control the order uh, of the keys. And we're going to do this in an ascending fashion. So uh, a nice little quick way to do this is uh, we're going to create a variable y, you know, just so we have something to, to, to 
plug this object orientation into. We're going to take a sorted. So we have sorted. And what are we sorting? Well, our character count that we have from above. And we're sorting it by the items that are within inside of it. Now, by doing this, what we are, that's not right. That's better. I'll add because I do want to add one more piece to this. So we're sorting, we're taking our dictionary that we created and we're sorting it based off of the items that are within that. That's going to put this in an ascending, um, meaning the, the, the lowest count to the highest count of the elements. So we're already, it's, it's, uh, it's sorting it for us. Now with something else we're going to be doing is we're going to add a key lambda. Key equals lambda, and I'm going to say at this point x, and I'll, I'll get to this in just a second, x1. Um, and of course, so, oh wait, no, I don't want to do, I don't want to reverse it now. I wanted to show you that port later, because right now I want ascending, right? Yeah, well, we'll do ascending. So lambda is, uh, it's something we haven't covered before, and I'll cover it uh, in another time. But lambda is a way of, um, almost like doing this whole defining of a function piece, it's a function of itself. Uh, and it's going to carry out whatever that function is that we're, that we're um, specifying at that particular moment. So all we're doing is we're saying we want the key to be that second position. Because the first position is the key, the second position is the value. And we're looking for this x1 that we're going to be executing. Um, and so then, then what we're going to do is we're going to compare the index one position of each tuple. Because uh, again, we have a list. And if we have a key and a value, that's going to be separated by a comma in a list, not the dictionary where it does a semicolon. Um, and then so then we have a tuple then is exactly what we're going to have. So if we did this, da, 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 just for so you can see it, let's print y. So you can see now that we have y is now uh, it started out as an empty list, and now it's it took exactly what we're going to have down here. So based on this, you can see that our we have two unique elements. We have i and we have s, which is true. We have two unique elements. Last time we only returned the i because that alphabetically became first. That came first in our sentence rather than a string. Um, but now this time we should be getting an i and an s because they both have a key value of one, the lowest values. So what it did was it sorted. It took our character count or dictionary. It, it's a character count by the items, and then it sorted that. And it sorted it, well, how? We had to tell it. We wanted to do it by lambda. We want to sort it by the, not the first part, but the second part, which is this is zero and this is one. That's where this is coming into place. So we want to take our entire list, x, um, take our entire list, and we want to take that second index position as our as our key of how we're going to do the sorting. And then I just wanted to print this to show you exactly what that i is going to look like. And of course, this none here is just referring to the fact that we didn't, print out our function because we did not finish it yet. So we don't need this in the end. So I'll take it out for now. I just wanted to show you that. So now what am I going to do? So we have y. We have our our, our, our our tuples inside of a list. So we're just going to do four items in y, right? We want to iterate through this now. What do we want to do? We want to compare the index position of each tuple. So how do I do that? Well, I'm just going to say if the item, and I care about that position, the second position, if it equals that sequence, forgetting that colon, then what I want to do, we named it all unique. We're going to append it with what? The item. And then of course, we always have to give our good old, we want to return All uniques. I gotta put an S. I didn't put the S there. I apologize. All right. So now they're all the same. See how when you highlight like it, I get all three. It shows me where all those variables show up. So I know they match. Um, all right. Sweet. Bring this down to spit so we see everything. So what I did was we created another for loop, iterating through it, and we're saying um, for each item in Y. And again, this is how we separated them out. If item in the that's the second position equals the same y of the one position for the, the, the value aspect of that tuple, then we want to append it into all uniques. So let us debug. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Let's run first because we do actually have a print statement below and it gave me i and s. And just for argument's sake, I do want to show you if we take this out and if I make this a lowercase 
A, and then we should get more because there's no other A's in there, right? Yeah. So yeah, see, that's what that's what I wanted to show you. So now we have, I got rid of the lowercase. So now we have one unique upper I, one unique lower A, one unique upper A, one unique upper P, one unique lower S. Now it's kind of being a smart S because we both know that those are not unique elements. Hence the lower method that we're applying here so that we only get the real ones that are, are resulted only one time. So let us debug. Get out of here. So I'm going to run my debug on the non repeats. Excuse me. And I'm going to F8. So it's going to put iApple eight peels into our string for the argument in the function. And all we're doing here is replacing all of these spaces with no space and lowercasing the entire string. Character counts empty dictionary, nothing new there. We already saw this loop before. It's going to be the same exact function. So let's go through this. Come on, baby. S, awesome. So now all uniques is an empty list. So we have that in memory. And then y equals the sorter to the character count by the items. And how are we doing that? We're using a lambda, which is the function of the self. And we're, we're telling exactly, whoop, let me get this other way so you can see that. What we're left with, we're left with exactly what we printed for y before. That same kind of a class list, it's got with tuples. Um, so you can still think of it like a key value, but it's not. It's more of a index position zero, index position one within each individual uh, tuple that comprises the list. So for item in y, well, it's going to tell me what is item in y. Well, the first item is i1. So for item one, well, item is right here. This is zero. This is one. If it equals y of the first index position, the second index position, then all uniques dot append item. So now you can see that was true and true. So in all uniques or empty list, we appended it with the I one because it equaled one. Now we're going to go F eight. Second uh, item is now S one. So it should also add that S one. So it's going to go to the next. Oh, why'd you freeze on me? So now we have a, and now a happens twice within the string. So it does not equal that one position. So it's not going to go to the line 23 of the all unique. So we're not appending our all uniques list. Same thing. We have a two, we have a four, we have a four did not work be in the sense that we, we did no longer hit a one in that second index position. So we're returning all uniques, non-repetitive. So in our console, we should be left with F8 through that last list. The only two elements that were non repeats throughout the entire string and the count, which we know is going to be one in this case. So uh, I feel that this one is much more um, productive that this, this particular code simply because of the fact that we were able to re return all uh, uniques, all non repetitives um, within that string. And that, that non repetitive is obviously going to be based on the lowest, lowest key value. Uh, and again, this has huge implications in uh, data security. Um, and encryption. So with that said, guys, have an excellent day, and I will see you all at the next video.